Luke chapter 7, I'm going to start reading in verse 36. You, you might have noticed we sang several songs that had to do with a personal uh, relationship with, with the Lord Jesus. I hadn't realized we'd sang several songs that were verily, verily. <laughs> we didn't do that on purpose. But uh, Luke chapter 7 is um, a time when Jesus is at a person's home. And let me start reading in, in verse 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping, he began to wash his feet with tears, and had wiped them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him. For she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with, her t with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, Her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee, Go in peace. Now, I don't know how often Jesus ate at people's homes, but his after-dinner speeches really got things going. <laughs> uh, he, you know, he just gets right to the, to the point there. And uh, you know, he points out to the man, the, the things he's talking about there were just considered normal politeness when you had a visitor. You know, we don't do those things. We don't wash people's feet and anoint their head with oil. You know, that, those aren't things that we do. But in, in their culture, that was considered polite. Kind of like in our day, turn off the TV. <laughs> you know, if somebody comes, turn off the TV. Offer them a, a seat, you know. Offer them a cool drink or something. Uh, th that's our culture. Well, their culture, that man hadn't even been polite to Jesus, even though he would invited him to dinner. And here was a woman, you know, as I, as I looked at that this week, I saw myself, and, and I saw us. You know, really, before God, we're sinners. And here's a woman, that was her, la her label before her community, a woman who was a sinner. You know, this was a, a time when uh, Jesus was just dealing with people personally. And that's the way he is. You know, we talk about a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. That's exactly what every person needs. That's exactly what would meet their, their deepest need, is to have a, a personal relationship with Jesus, Jesus Christ. You know, as you, as you look at this passage this morning, I, I want us to consider two questions. Number one, how has Jesus changed my life? And secondly, how has my life affected others? I think those are important questions to ask. Here was a, a person that God changed her life. You know, in, in her community, she was known as a sinner. Now, we assume from that that she was a, a, an immoral woman. But you know, as Jesus spoke to her in verse 48, he makes a, an amazing statement, thy sins are forgiven. You know, that's, that's something we need to understand. This woman life was changed because she was forgiven. 
which was a sinner. The problem is, we look at our lives and we compare ourselves to others and we think, well, I'm not so bad. That's what the Pharisee was doing. Now, we, we even know his name. His name was Simon. Uh, Simon looked at that woman. He could see she was a sinner. The whole community could see she was a sinner. But you know what? The Bible says we've all sinned. And, and Jesus points out to him. Uh, he, he gives him a, a story, I guess it is. Uh, certain creditors, two debtors. One owes 500, the other owes 50. Which one is going to be uh, more grateful? Which of them will love him, him the most? And the, the man answers, well, probably the one that owes the most. You know, the problem we have is that we don't see our sin. It's easy for me to see your sin. I excuse my sin, but boy, your sin annoys me. Your sin bothers me. And that's, that's a common attitude that we have. But we need to see before God, the Bible describes us all as sinners. You know, we could all, it, without Christ, that would be our label. Oh, there's a man, he's a sinner. There's a woman, oh, she's a sinner. There's a boy, he's a sinner. We're all sinners before God. We're born sinners. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, religion is built on pride. I'm better than you. Uh, God loves me more than you. But you know what? God sees us all the same. Someone has said the ground is level at the foot of the cross. And it's true. We all have to come before God uh, through Jesus He's the only way to God. He's the only way to know forgive, forgiveness. Uh, we need to understand the doom of a sinner. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. It's not just physical death. That's separation from God for eternity. It's the opposite of eternal life. You know, we, we love the idea of eternal life, uh, but you know the, the Bible says in Revelation, death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. See, without Christ, we not only die physically, we die spiritually. We're separated from God for eternity. And he says, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. We need our name written in God's book of life. We need to be forgiven. See, our sin condemns us. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. You're not the exception. I'm not the exception. All have sinned. And the Bible says that sin is against God. Isaiah put it this way. He said, Your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid His face from you that He will not hear. Our sin. Only God can forgive us. You know, what a wonderful thing it is that Jesus would say to that woman, Thy sins are forgiven. And you know, that's, that's what we need. That's what we want. And the only source is exactly Jesus Christ. He's the source of forgiveness. All of sin that comes short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. See, the question is, do you have Jesus? Do you have Jesus? She was forgiven. And, and you know, it's a wonderful thing to know that in Jesus Christ is, is our only hope. The psalmist put it this way. Let me just read this, Psalm 130, uh, verse 3. I always think of this as, anyway. If thou, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there's forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. See, the reason we fear God is because he's the only source of forgiveness. We need to respect him. We need to honor him. We need to come before him. This woman's life was changed because she was forgiven. No wonder she loved him so much. She understood. She realized she was a sinner. And like I said, that Pharisee realized she was a sinner, but his problem was he didn't realize he was a sinner. Verse 39, uh, you know, she, she was uh, doing all these things and, you know, showing her love to the Lord Jesus, and uh, the Pharisee spake within himself. It, it must have been very strange to have someone answer your thoughts. Jesus answered him, his, just his thoughts. The Pharisee didn't realize, he didn't understand that his sin separated him from God. And because this woman understood her sin, and because she understood God's forgiveness, her life was changed, and she was forgiven. And as a result, she could show love. See, not only was she forgiven, she could show love. And the thing that's, I think, important to see here is, this is different than the lust of her former life. You know, nowadays it's hard to talk to people about love because they always think of it as lust. 
But lust and love are very different, very different. And, and God loved us. He gave his son. And we can love him because he, he first loved us. This was, this was like a person rescued from death. And she understood Jesus is the one who rescued her. She loved him because of it. You know, God tells us to love. Now, there's many verses. I won't read them all to you. But in, in Mark chapter 12, when Jesus was asked the greatest commandment, he said, it's to love the Lord your God. He said, the second's like it, to love your neighbor. He tells us in Matthew 5 to love our enemies. Wow. In John 13, he tells us to love each other. First Peter, he says to love the brotherhood. Listen, you need to have a love for, for other Christians. Husbands, in Ephesians 5, he tells us to love our wives. Uh, you know, th there's a lot there. God tells us to love, and we can. We can. If your life has been changed by the Lord Jesus, he makes it possible for you to love. If you've been forgiven, you can love. The Bible says we can do it because he first loved us. 1 John 4, 19, we love him because he first loved us. 1 John 4, 7, and 8, he says that uh, he is love. If you know the Lord, you can love. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he says you can love because he's made you new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, the world doesn't understand love like God has, but they need to. And as a Christian... You need to understand God's forgiveness. You also need to understand God's love. God loved you, and because of that, you can love. You can love because of the Holy Spirit within you. You know, when you talk about the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, what's the very first one? Fruit of the Spirit is love. <laughs> That's what God's Holy Spirit does in us. Love, joy, peace, and all those things that God's Holy Spirit is, uh, is bringing about. See, the Bible says the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. God has made it real in our lives. And now we need to show it to others. Don't wait for someone else. You know, in, in our church, don't look around and think, well, oh, nobody's, nobody's loving me the way I deserve to be loved. Start a trend. <laughs> you know, you, you take, take charge. You, you be first. Uh, reach out to others. Love really is something we give. It's not something we take. It's something we give. Uh, have you understood how great a sinner you are? Have you looked at others and seen their sin? Uh, when you understand your own sin, what it got, cost God to offer forgiveness, it should cause you to love Him. It should cause you to love Him. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. There's a verse in 1 Peter where He says, Who His own self bear our sins in His own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. See, that's the love of God. She was changed in that she was forgiven. She was changed in that she could now show love, real love. And when she put her, her faith in Christ, uh, saw her forgiveness, uh, began to show love, the last thing that Jesus says to her there in, in Luke chapter 7 is, Thy faith hath saved thee, Go in peace. She could go in peace. If you look at what God does for us as Christians, really it's what the world wants. You know, they want to have forgiveness. They don't want to always feel guilty. Well, the way the world deals with it is all the wrong ways. The way to get rid of your guilt is to be forgiven. Go to God, confess it and forsake it. You know, let Him cover your sins. Uh, the world wants to, uh, to know love. They want to love and be loved. Well, that, that's found in God. God is love. You know, the world wants peace. But it's not going to come about by worldly methods. She could go in peace because Jesus is the one who gives peace. There's so many wonderful things Jesus has said about this. One is John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. There's a phrase to hang on to. Man, think about that this week. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. We can have peace. We can have peace with God. Romans 5.1, he says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't forget that part. 
We can have peace with God. And the way we're, we have peace with God is we come to Him by faith, confessing our sin, calling upon Him as our Savior, and He does the work. We're justified. We're declared righteous. Not by works of righteousness, which we've done, but according to His mercy. We can have peace with God. We can have peace with people. Ephesians 2.14 says, He is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Now that's talking about between Jew and Gentile, but uh, you know, we can have peace with people uh, through the Lord Jesus. Uh, he can help us with that. Uh, we can have peace in tribulation. John 16, 33. Uh, I should know that. Uh, I can usually say it. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Uh, we can have peace in tribulation. Uh, listen, you're going to have trouble, but you can also have peace. He says, go in peace. In John 14, 27, the last phrase was, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We can have peace within. We can have, as he calls it in Philippians, the peace that passes understanding. You know, the world might look at us and say, oh, they, they must be troubled. And when they see that we're trusting the Lord, it gives them something to think about. And that's exactly what we need to do. Uh, God said to that woman, go in peace. You know, you may not always feel peace, but you need to believe it. You need to live by faith. Don't go by your feelings. You, you know, your peace is not in your situation. Sometimes we think, well, if I could just change my situation. You just can't always do that. But God says you can still have peace. Peace in the midst of the storm. As Christians, we, we rejoice in God's forgiveness. And the way we know it is by God's word. I love Ephesians 1, 7 when he says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. We have redemption. We have forgiveness. And when God says it, believe him. Why not? <laughs> it's true. When God says you're forgiven, believe him. If you've come to him by faith, and whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Listen, we have God's word on it. And he, uh, he's going to keep his word. When God says you can love, believe him. You, know, you might be facing a situation, ooh, this is going to be hard. Well, listen, you have the power of God on your side to, to love in that situation. Uh, when God says go in peace, believe him. But you say, oh, pastor, you, you, you don't know my situation. <laughs> well, God does. And God has the answer for you. Just like that woman. Uh, if that woman could believe God, so can you. So can you. So can I. You know, God still changes lives today. <laughs> now, what a wonderful thing it is. Uh, many of you can share your testimony of how God has, has changed your life. I've seen people, when they got saved, even their very face change. I don't mean just immediately, but, uh, you know, you, you, you see them the next week and you think, is that the same person? Because <coughs> they're just... They have the peace of the Lord. They, they have the joy of the Lord. They have forgiveness. Now, what a blessing it is. Amen. Uh, we, had a, we have a friend who, when he got saved, and I didn't know him when he got saved, but uh, he was a mess. Tattoos all over him. He was, you know, he was trouble. But he got saved. And, uh, you know, God changed him. God made him a preacher. You know, people would come to church, and he had, you know, tattoos on his hand. He covered most of them up, you know. But, uh, and they, boy, they were crummy. Yep, well, all tattoos are crummy, but anyway. Uh, you got to change him. His outside stayed pretty much the same, but he had the joy of the Lord, and God gave him a you know, desire to, to help people. What a blessing to see how God changes lives. People are, who are changed for the Lord have a new concern for others. And, you know, this woman, uh, God changed her life. But, you know, it changed what she did. She had a, had a desire to do something for the Lord. She said, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. You know, that's, that's true of each one of us. When, when we see what God has done for us, when we see the love that God has shown to us in Jesus Christ, it makes us want to do something for Him, to, to be like Jesus. How can my life point others to Christ? What is... What is God doing in my life? How is, how is my life affecting others? You know, there's, there's some things that we need to keep in mind. 
We need to love the Lord. As you read there in, in Luke chapter 7 of, of that woman, she just was just showing her love to the Lord the best way that she could. You know, there's, there's just some basic, simple things that we can do to love the Lord. Uh, number one, we should just do the basics. When all else fails, get, get back to the basics, folks. Yeah, we need to read our Bible. We need to listen to what God has to say. We need to pray. We need to witness to others. We need to be faithful in, in our church. We need to tithe. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, there used to be bumper stickers that said, Honk if you love Jesus. And somebody else came out with a bumper sticker that said, If you love Jesus, tithe. Anybody can honk. <laughs> yeah. We need to love the Lord. It needs to have a practical side to it. Start with the basics. That's what she was doing. She was just doing what she could for the Lord when she could. You know, the Bible says as well, if you love the Lord, it said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Obey Him. Sometimes you'll read the Bible and you think, oh, that must not mean what that says. <laughs> Usually it does. <laughs> and it just, just obey the Lord. Follow Him. In Luke 6, 46, it's just on the same page in my Bible. It says, why, Jesus said, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? You know, how can He be our Lord if we're not really obeying Him? We need to obey the Lord. Believe what He says and, and do what He says. The book of James says, be doers of the Word, not hearers only. It's not enough just to hear it. You can even memorize it and still not do it. We need to obey. Just, just do what the Lord says. And then talk about Jesus to others. Do you remember the, the um, demon-possessed man that was, was healed and relieved of his demons? And he wanted to go with Jesus. And Jesus said, no, you stay here and, and tell others. That's what we need to do. God doesn't just take us to heaven when we get saved. Well, maybe sometimes he might, but, uh, you know, as, as Christians, he calls us to live for him. And we need to, to be speaking about him. You, you hear about these fan clubs. Uh, you know, really, if, if we knew each other, the way God knows us, we wouldn't have any fan clubs for each other. But we need to be a fan for the Lord Jesus. We need to be talking about Him. Uh, we need to be presenting Him to, to others. Our life needs to point others to Jesus Christ. Uh, this woman, uh, she had an encounter with the Lord. And uh, you can have the same. God can give you peace. God can help you to love. In your situation. But particularly, God offers you forgiveness. And when he says it, if you'll do and believe what he says, you can count on it. God will, will keep his word. Let me ask you this morning, are you saved? What if Jesus were to come today? What if he were to call his own out? Would you be one of his own? If you were to die, do you know for sure that you'd go to heaven? You know, based up upon God's word. I'm not talking about something you've done, but have you allowed God to do something in your life? Have you called upon Him as, as your Savior? Has He changed your life? Bit by bit, you know. He's very gracious. Let me encourage you this morning. If you're not sure about your soul's salvation, the Bible says today is the day. You know, er every day somebody steps into eternity that didn't expect to. Now, with these floods, there were some people who got swept away. They didn't expect that. Husband and wife. One of them gets swept away. The other one's left. We were thinking, you know, what a, what, a, what a tragedy that is. And yet every day, I mean, death is a reality. We, we cannot count on tomorrow, except we can put our life into God's hand. And no matter what happens tomorrow, we know that we can trust Him. Today, today is the day of salvation. If you've never trusted Christ as Savior, let me encourage you this morning. Today, uh, take care of that. We're going to sing a song. It's... Page 505, have you any room for Jesus? And let me say this, Jesus doesn't want to be a part of your life. Jesus wants to be your life. That's right. He's not asking to be one of a hundred different things. He's asking, to, he wants to have preeminence. He wants to be your God. And that he deserves that. Now, Azrael, you come and